Hello everyone and welcome to another very beautiful chess game of Paul Morphy. And in this chess game Paul Morphy is playing with the white pieces and his opponent George William Littleton is playing with the black pieces and you have to hear the tragic story of George William Littleton. Well, he was the fourth baron of Littleton succeeding his father in 1837. After graduating from the college, he took his seat in the House of Lords. He is also known as Lord Littleton. He was a very rich, wealthy and a powerful man. Although he was suffering from depression, his daughter died before him at a very young age. So one day at the age of 59, he committed suicide by throwing himself down the stairs. So this event happened in 1876 and he died after this sad incident. So he was a very rich, wealthy man, but not happy. So this was the tragic story of George Littleton. So before starting to the chess game, I just want to show you the picture of the English nobleman. This is the picture of George Littleton who played a chess game against Paul Morphy, the legendary Paul Morphy, and he had an interesting life. So anyway, this is the picture of the English nobleman, Littleton, and let's get back to the chess game. After the sad, melancholic story, let's cheer up and let's check out this magnificent chess game by Paul Morphy. So Paul Morphy is playing with the white pieces and George William Littleton has the black pieces. Paul Morphy starts the game with playing e4 as always. He always plays e4 in the opening. e5 by Littleton, f4, e takes on f4, knight to f3, g5, h4, g4. Lord Littleton is attacking the knight. And Paul Morphy played knight to e5, d6, attacking the knight. Well, this time, Paul Morphy didn't sacrifice the knight. Maybe he wants to be respectful for the lord he is playing against to. So that's why Paul Morphy played knight takes on g4. Sometimes Paul Morphy captures the pawn on f7, throwing his pieces to his opponent's face. But this time, he is playing with the lord. So we have bishop to e7, d4, bishop takes on h4 capturing the pawn and that's check and Paul Morphy is defending with the knight knight to f2 bishop takes knight king takes bishop and Littleton is a pawn up plus Paul Morphy is losing the castling rights it looks like black is doing a good job knight to f6 knight to c3 defending the pawn but then queen to e7 well Paul Morphy played bishop takes on f4 and Littleton captures the pawn. Knight takes on e4. Knight takes knight. Queen takes on e4. Again, Littleton is a pawn up. But in this position, Paul Morphy played the killer move. Well, Paul Morphy played bishop to b5. That's check. We have king to f8, of course. If something like c6, then rook to e1, winning the queen. And this is all over for black, positionally and materially. So Lord Littleton played king to f8 and then bishop to h6 by Paul Morphy, that's check. So because of the obvious reason, black can't move his king on the e-file. So we have king to g8, running away. He doesn't want his queen to be pinned and Paul Morphy played rook to h5 threatening to play rook to g5, bishop to f5 by Littleton, hoping to defend with the bishop, queen to d2 by Paul Morphy, bishop to g6. Paul Morphy played the move and Lord Littleton resigned. Well, Paul Morphy played rook to e1 and black resigned. The possible continuation if saving the queen, queen to g4, then rook to e8, checkmate. So that's why this is the last position of this very elegant chess game by Paul Morphy. 
So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and I hope to see you next time. Take care.